together and praise the Lord. Come on, he's worthy of our praise. Come on now, come on. Come on, we're here to be lifted up. We're, we're here to be engaged by the Holy Spirit. Here that we might make some difference in not just our lives, but because we are gathered here together, we make a difference in the lives of all of us around us. Look to your left, look to your right, look to the front, look to the back, and just see those who have come out this morning, those who are in place in the house, and just making a joyful noise and being open to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Hmm. You know, my brothers and sisters, it's just so much that is yet going on around us. Amen. So much that is still challenging us. Sometimes maybe when you wake up in the morning, you don't know what's going to happen. You're not sure what it is you want to do. Wars raging. Politicians holler picking. <laughs> A whole lot of money being raised for some stuff and not enough. For stuff that ought to be funded. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you think about that? Because there is so much, so much that is happening around us. Many times we find folk who are working from home still. And businesses closing up. And other businesses opening up. And I don't know about uh, your phone, but so much stuff that comes that should not be coming on my phone. <laughs> Just so much. And if you're not aware of what is right and what is not right, call us and you can get I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> I, I see I got some witnesses up in here. Got some of those phone calls. These miraculous things that they are so-called make it happen for you. And then you wonder where the money went. <laughs> How it got pulled out. It's just where we are right now. The negativity that is around us. And yet we, we are, if we are children of God, if we are those children who listen to the one who cares about us, one who watches over us, if we focus on him, so it's not about us, but it is about him. I got a phone call not too long ago from a young lady who was trying to get some things done in places in Baltimore. I didn't really know her, she didn't know me, but we talked on the phone and we had a good conversation. And then we had another conversation. And I said something a little bit about me and our church and something in what I said must have touched her because <laughs> she said Pastor Wasser I'm going to be at your church today because uh, I'm, 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 what we've been talking about you just how you said what you said and talked about what you talked about Hannah would you just stand up please Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say? <laughs> 
But see, my brother and sister, it's just an illustration of what happens when you let go and let God. It's not always about us. It's not about what we think we can do and things we don't want to do. But when there is an opportunity, when something is presented before us, and it's not what we may have thought about, may not be what we thought could happen, would happen. But to take the chance to seize the opportunity that if God is blessing me, if God is doing something in my life, if God is magnifying me in a way that I feel good about the ups and the downs and knowing that he is with me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? So it is us who, who can be that vessel And Lord, because you have blessed me, how can I bless somebody else? How can I stop looking at other folk who look like they they ain't going to be about anything good? But you don't know that. I don't know that. But see, that's that's, that's why we, we, we really need to look at, we really need to begin to look at in a positive way that relationship, that relationship that we need to have with Jesus. That personally, you need to know that I have a relationship with him. Maybe I don't understand everything right away. But there's something about being in his presence. Something that chases away the darkness. Something that lifts me up when I've been knocked down. Someone who can show up when no one else will show up. And see, the relationship is about one who knows us better than we know ourselves. It is about how we can really get serious. That's why I know sometimes folk get upset with me, but I, 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 I'm, uh, for a long time in ministry, it's, it's been about It's not about membership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has to be about discipleship. See, in discipleship, when you know who the master is, when you know how the master operates, Mm -hmm. when you know how the Holy Spirit is able to move in a way and in a time that helps us begin to look at ourselves and realize that there is a gift for us but we're not stepping up to get that gift because we don't think we deserve it but how do you know whether you deserve it or not if you have not taken the opportunity to check it out in our scripture of for this morning from John we hear how the Passover is coming to Bethany it talks about the home of Lazarus it talks about the one who was raised from the dead it says that they gave a dinner for him and Martha Martha served <laughs> And Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. And and then it talks about how Mary, and Mike, I did like that translation. I'm going to find that. Okay. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Something was going on, my brothers and sisters. Something we need to take care of and look at even today. What do you spend money on? And does it last? Does it make you feel better? How many things do you have piled up that maybe you haven't even done anything with. 
any hoarders in the house? I must confess. I confess. And I think I might have mentioned this before. Rochelle has threatened to throw the, the, the move up that big, you know how they had those big things you dump stuff into? She's talking about a big one. They had them roll up on the side of the house. And if I don't get moving that stuff in the dumpster soon enough, she says she's going to do it herself. But I am doing better. It just takes a while when you think about the years that you've been somewhere doing something. When you think about all that and all that stuff that you have gathered along the way and, and, and feeling that it might make you feel good and better. I, I, I looked at some stuff I had not even opened. Uh, I see I see some folk shaking their head. <laughs> oh yeah, Pastor Washington, I know what you're talking about now. I, I I could not believe some of the stuff that I had that I had not opened the packages. No, I didn't get the same thing again there. <laughs> but it's just feeling the need to have something and then what we have we don't always use. But here was Mary with this costly perfume. And everybody in the house, the scripture indicates, could smell it. But always in the house, a lot of times in the house, the one that wants to pull everybody else down, not acting and realizing that. I got my own stuff I got to deal with. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one we know who was going to betray, betray Jesus. And then he says, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denaria and the money be given to the poor? It sounds like it's reasonable, doesn't it? But when someone has in their mind, I'm going to get my money. And if I can get all the money, it's going to be with me. Liar, liar, pants on fire. But we have folk now going through that, going through the mess. All of the devastation that is happening around us lives being lost even the fight that people are talking about again maybe not a fight but the punch <laughs> that people are talking about again and again and again and again and even <laughs> even when I look on Facebook and saw how many pastors <laughs> I thought they would have had something better to say in regards to that. Let go and let God. You know, do something that uh, not as... <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs> but here was Judas. And here we are sometimes, many times. Here we are in a situation where we want to put other people down. And again, we're not doing what it is God is calling you and I to do. How long, oh Lord, will we tore up and messed up like this? How long? So who, even under the sound of my voice today, when you think about it, what have you done? How have you acted? For folk that you may know, you can see them, maybe you hear about them, and you don't do nothing when you already have more 
than enough. When you're not willing to trust God to supply you with what you need, and again, not your greed, for Him to show up and watch and see how we as Christians, we as spiritual people, ought to be the ones if. We're in that relationship to begin to take some of what you have. When you see someone in need, when you see a family in need, when you see sometimes people in the grocery store, prices go up. And people are struggling to have enough. Have you ever been in a store or something, supermarket somewhere, and saw someone who was having a hard time? And then to pay for what they got in the cart. And for them to go through that line thinking they got to check out and pay for it. And someone has already paid for everything in your basket. They don't have to know who you are, who I am, who we are. But what they do need to understand is I am a child of the king. I am in a relationship with someone who watches over me. I am in a relationship with one who tells me when I'm doing well and when I'm not doing so well. But in the midst of it all, he loves me. In the midst of it all. Liar, liar, pants on fire. But when we stop being what doesn't amount to much, and we come over to the spiritual side, I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to understand what he did, how he did, what he did, and why, 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 why. So then when I feel the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, when I'm in a situation I, and I, I can feel the Holy Spirit right by me, and in a way that I know something is about to happen that I need to do and understand that I've already been equipped to do what I'm about to do. It's not a loss, it's a gain. And if we call ourselves who we say we are, if we call ourselves who we say we are, and Jesus said to, <laughs> to Judas, you just don't get it, my brother. You don't get it. You've been with me, and you don't get it. You've been in the church for most of your life, and you don't get it. Yet. You've been turning your nose up at some people in need, but you still don't get it. Someone's about to be evicted, but you still don't get it. Someone has lost their job, but you still don't get it. But when I became a disciple, I understand.
understood. When I became a disciple of Jesus Christ, I understood. And so, my brothers and sisters, I, I challenge you. You know where you is now. <laughs> you know whether or not you cry yourself to sleep at night. Don't want to get up in the morning. But I know what I know. And you need to know what you know. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. But he is strong. Yes. Jesus loves you. And in that love, he puts enough for you to love others. Somebody's around you is hurting. Someone around you is maybe to put a gun to the head and pull the trigger. And sometimes all it takes is a little something for a person to realize, for someone to realize you see them as a person, as part of humanity. And did not Jesus do that all along the way? Even while he was on a cross. Did he not reach out to a thief? He knew he did wrong. He recognized that. He wasn't trying to act like he didn't do what he did. He told the other thing, yeah, he, he, we're getting what we deserve because of what we did and how we did it. And Jesus said to him, today, this day you will be in paradise. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am you can be all. I, I prepared a place and you just got to get your life together. You got to get yourself together to do what you need to do and not wait till the last moment. Pour into somebody else's life. Listen to somebody else's story and see what begins to happen. So my brothers and sisters, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? I, I really appreciated Mike sharing that story about the car, where he parked the car. Or how long he's been parking the car there. <laughs> but see, when we, when we are doing a reality check, it's straight. It's forward. It says what it says. This is the day when a godly woman anointed Jesus as king. And so we need to praise him get our praise on for him praise him without ceasing and praise leads to worship to worship him believing he is the Lord God Almighty 
He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the one who can do things in an awesome, awesome way. So we want to leave here today to touch the world. We want to leave today to touch the world, to be open for what may come our way. The crowd of men were not impressed with the offering that was being lifted up. What we have to give might not be impressive either. But my brothers and sisters, we will reach out. We should reach out to make a difference in the world this week. And if you want to call me up, text me up, let me know something that you have done differently. If you don't want to let me know, just lift it up to the Savior. Go, my brothers and sisters, in the power of the touching God. Go in the spirit of the receiving Christ. And go with that Holy Spirit, that Holy Companion that is ever present, that has the power to do what is needed and necessary. Like Mary, like Mary changed the world with what she had to offer. And Jesus has already told you, me, all of us to leave the one to 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 not leave but to receive the one who is reaching out and so as you do today go in peace as you leave today go in power can you say hallelujah can you say hallelujah come on put your hands together come on stand on your feet come on now come on And when you go out of here, have a smile on your face. As you go out of here, try to find someone, touch somebody, and let them know how you were lifted up and how you are ready.